Man, God is so good. Well, we're in the last part today, the very last part. We're talking about the four different platforms that God has given us to orchestrate spiritual warfare from and how these all interact and um, how we're all going to be involved in different parts of this. You might be involved in one platform. You might be involved in all four platforms. Uh, or there might be a platform that you're just involved a little bit on, but you're not uh, totally doing everything within that platform. And your involvement's up to you. That's between you and God. I don't try to get up here and say, you got to do this, you got to do this, you got to do this. Um, you just see where you fit with this, and that's between you and the Lord. And I just try to explain how these are tools that God has given us uh, to go into spiritual warfare and push back the kingdom of darkness and, and push against that and, and bringing light, exposing God's truth into the situation. There's a lot of deception out there right now, and we need to push back with the things of God. And so you can, you know, there's our opening intro in your notes. We usually go through that. And um, our uh, theme verses are Ephesians 5, 8 through 14 and, and Matthew 5, 16. Basically, let your light so shine and then expose the darkness. Bring truth to this crazy darkness. So today we're going to talk about our last platform that's involved in this, that God brought all this together. We're going to talk about we the county and how that, that fits into everything. So um, today... Today is more of um, more of a, of a history of what's going on than it is a, a, a per se like a Bible teaching. Bible teachings are great, and and we always bring scripture. Everything we do is based on scripture, but history is really important. Even our history, God wants to make sure that we understand our history um, because if if somebody controls the past, the history, they're going to control the future. Let me give you an example of this. Um, you know, right now, what, there's an attack, and I believe it's from, from the enemy. It's a Marxist attack, and all Marxism is based in Luciferianism, whether you know that or not. Uh, that's, that's that underlying foundation. And there's, there's an attack. The enemy is the accuser. That's how Satan works. He accuses you of everything all the time, especially things that he's guilty of. And so the enemy uses these tactics. There's something that's called cancel culture, which is to cancel all the things from the past as we've seen them. And then also critical race theory works with this, which is just being really critical, tear everything apart, get real quit critical, real judgmental, uh, looking at all the, the bad, the nasty and everything and, and, and trying to use that then to destroy that, trying to smear people's character, trying to smear all these things that have happened in the past. Why? So they can make changes now that will affect our future. So if we let go of what the past said, of, of what we've seen, and again, we're not perfect, America's not perfect, our founding fathers are, aren't perfect, but God's given us a system in America, our government system, our constitution, uh, which comes from God. His, his authority is in the Constitution. Our rights come from God. And we have to hold on to that because if we let go of that, then the enemy convinces everybody that God has nothing to do with our nation and then we become more godless because you got an agreement with the lie instead of with the truth. Okay, so we got to be careful with that. So what does cancel culture do? What does... Um, this critical race theory, what's it doing? It's try, that's, that's why they're tearing down statues. Uh, all the statues, they're, they're, they're trying to tear down and trying to say that all this stuff is bad. How horrible America is. Our founding fathers, they're racist and they're, and they're white supremacists and, and they hate people and they own slaves and everything like this. Well, this is how the enemy works. He'll take a little bit of truth, a little bit of truth, so you believe it, but then he twists it and then, and then puts the seed of a twisted truth into your heart. And when that starts to bring forth fruit in your life, it's like all of a sudden this deception, the spirit of deception is upon you because you're not seeing things clearly. You're not really seeing the truth as it is. So were our founding fathers slave owners? Not all of them, but were a lot of them? Yeah. 
Yeah, they were. But, but back then, I mean, blacks owned blacks. People, I mean, there were slaves all over. I mean, there were Irish slaves. There were white slaves. There was, I mean, it was just how the culture was. But then there were a lot of our founding fathers who didn't like that, who thought that this was wrong, and eventually spoke out against it enough. So when Abraham Lincoln came, said, we got to put a stop to this, and it was through the government because there was God's righteousness flowing back into the government. But if the enemy can get you to believe that our founding fathers are, are, are racist, haters, uh, uh, white supremacists, blah, 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 then, then what happens is all their documents are tainted because their thought process is not correct and it's prejudiced. So therefore, the Constitution is a flawed document and needs to be thrown out and start over. But yeah, but they want to take God out completely. They want another constitution that's void of God. They want a new morality. They want something. But but if you understand that, no, you know this is the this is the truth. America is the most homogenous, unified country in the world. We have more religious freedom in America than any place in the world. There's more opportunity for you to grow and prosper regardless of what your faith is, regardless of what your color is, regardless of what your nationality. I mean, come on, we got a black guy that was elected president not once, twice. Come on. But the enemy says, oh, no, we're horrible, horrible, horrible. Now, is there a, a oppression against a, a lot of minorities and, and, and blacks and different things? Yeah, there is. Uh, there's never going to be a perfect world. And there's going to be oppression and people aren't going to be treated right because they're different. You know, I, like I said, um, you know, I'm, I'm part Polish. And man, I grew up getting pounded with Polish jokes all the time. I mean, I can't, I, man, I mean, you know, I was really glad finally when they started picking on the blondes because it went from, the, it went from all the Polak jokes and they went into the blonde jokes. And I thought, whoo, thank God. You know, I'm not going to hear another Polak joke, especially about my big nose, you know. I heard a lot of big Polak nose jokes, but you know, you just learn to laugh at it. And I didn't, I, you know, I wasn't going to feel like I'm oppressed because of that or whatever. It's like, whatever, you know, we just keep going. And so that's what the enemy's trying to do. So we want to look at the history too, from who we are, who God created us to be, because we want to stay on the path that God created us for. So we fight the battle that God's created us to fight. So we're going to talk about that. Now, one of the reasons why I believe that that God brought us into this patriotic movement um, is, is because um, I feel that the Lord, we have a gift uh, being a spiritual warring church and being a prophetic. We understand the power of decreeing, declaring God's word. And so did our founding fathers in the Declaration of Independence. They declared God's authority four times. And that's why they were able to win against Great Britain and, and, and this country is free today. And so we don't want to let go of God's authority. So that needs to be prophetically decreed, brought back into this, and there needs to be a prayer covering over this patriotic movement. And so I feel that's why God brought us in, brought me in. When God brings me in, you know, a lot of you uh, go in with that too because, like, you know, we're family and we're brothers and sisters and, you know, we're kind of like the, the bride of Christ and it's kind of like in a relationship. Um, if I do something, it affects Karen. If Karen does something, it affects me. You can't, you don't do something on your own when you're connected with people. And so we, we entered into this battle, and I believe it's because God uh, wanted me, us, to have it for a prayer covering to protect that because it is, they're moving with God's righteousness. They're fighting for the light. It, it's the light uh, against the darkness right now. And so we got to have that, that covering over this and then also to speak prophetically into it. Now, with God's delegated authority and to release God's delegated authority, we're at different levels. And the higher the level, the greater the authority you get to release into a situation to bring about God's will. At this church, I'm the lead pastor. So um, there, there's elders, there's an outside board. I mean, I got to answer, I mean, to people. I mean, I, and I answer to all of you. I mean, I mean, come on, you know, I mean, uh, you know, Charles came up to me, heart check, you know, and I had to make sure my heart was right. And that's fine. That's how it works, right? We all work together. We all challenge. Iron sharpens iron. Um, but, but as the lead pastor, I'm the one with the greatest authority delegated from God to speak into Lifesong Church. Um, but that doesn't mean I get to do what I want and I can, you know, whatever. It's, I, there's people that still, we have checks and balances, and, which is good. So the same thing with the patriotic movement. Now, if we are praying for the patriotic movement um, from a distance and we're not involved, let's say we're, we're not really involved with the patriotic movement, 
but we're just going we're gonna, to we're gonna pray for it from a distance. Well, we're, we're praying to it, um, but it's not the same thing. It doesn't have as much authority as if God takes a person and puts us in this and over this because, you know, being the founder of We the County, now there's almost 2,000 members and 76 counties and 450 small businesses involved and, and four or five other uh, huge patriotic organizations join with us. But in, from that perspective then, when, when I get to pray and prophesy over what's going on, I'm releasing God's authority over the movement instead of to the movement. If I'm not involved, when we pray and release, it's, it goes to the movement, has a little bit of effect. But when you're over it, when you're over something, understanding God's authority and how God works, when you're over it, it releases it through and it creates a covering over it. And it brings God to pass throughout the organization in a much more powerful way than if you're not over it and you're out here speaking to it. It doesn't release God's authority at the level as when you're over it. That makes sense, right? I know it does because you, you guys understand spiritual warfare. And I believe that's why God brought us into this thing. Um, now, I want, so I want to go and, and talk about our history. Let's go way back. This is so cool. How all this stuff, God is so cool. And so we want to look at the history. So way back on September 11, 2001, the terrorist attack, most of us are old enough to remember the terrorist attack that happened on America. And so on 9-11, I remember hearing, this is when our church just started. We were just a couple months old. We were uh, back in Sandusky, and we were a church at that point called Lights of Hope Ministry. And so when the terrorist attack hit, we were devastated. I don't know if a lot of us remember. I mean, you can remember where you were when you heard. It was like a panic and a shock. Um, thousands of people were killed. Our towers were going down. We didn't know how many planes were out there. A plane crashed in a field. A plane hit the Pentagon, as well as the towers, and the towers were burning. And I went, I remember our church was, was brand new, and I went to the church, and I laid flat out. I laid prostate on the floor, and I was just crying out to, to God, and, and I heard real strong in my hurt, heart, I felt this is why Life Song was created at the point, at that time, it, it was Lights of Hope Ministry. And I remember God saying, uh, you know, uh, you were created, I, I, I have a plan. I've got a plan for this ministry. Uh, but I never realized it would take 19 years to come to fruition. So I, I knew that somehow God raised us up for a specific call at that time 19 years ago. So now fast forward 19 uh, years uh, to January 2020. So this is about two years ago. And Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, he's a huge author. He's a, he's a prophetic voice. He's a rabbi. He's a, a Christian, Messianic Jew. He has a worldwide ministry. He wrote the book, The Harbinger. Um, I don't know if you ever read that, but it sold a couple million copies. Very powerful prophetic book. And a lot of times we do things and it kind of like lines up with what he's doing. It just floors me. It's not like I look to and see and try to uh, imitate. It's just, no, God told us to do this. And then it's like, oh, lines up. This is really cool with what somebody else is doing. But so anyways, so in, in January 2020, Rabbi Jonathan Kahn, he had a, a prophetic question a, a, about the 9-11 terrorist attack on America. And he showed a paradigm. What a paradigm is, is like a parallel or a pattern of something that God has done and how God works. And so he showed this paradigm how back uh, in, in Judah, around what was it, what was the year, um, 586 B.C., 586 B.C., um, uh, they were, Judah's heart had gone astray. Judah was not serving God, which was Jerusalem uh, in Israel, and um, their heart wasn't serving God. And so, you know, the prophet's trying to warn them, trying to tell them, look, you know, Jeremiah is trying to tell them, um, they're coming in, Babylon's going to, I mean, if, if we don't repent and get our heart right, we're going to go down. And so there, the Babylon's came, the Babylonians, and they smashed through part of the wall and the gate. There was a limited attack, a limited invasion, but then they pushed them back. And Jeremiah said, this is a warning from God. And if we don't change our heart, the next time it's going to be a complete annihilation. We're done. And that's exactly 19 years later, then Babylon came back and they destroyed. They took them captive. They destroyed Jerusalem. And so what he had prophesied had come to pass. And he said, America is in the same paradigm, the same pattern. When the Twin Towers went down in New York, he said it was God telling everybody, look, this is a warning from God. 
the, the enemy is at the gate. And if we don't repent and get our hearts right, then we have to worry about a full judgment. And so he said, he said, coming up to this now, he said, this, this fall, September 9th, uh, 2020, or September 11th, is going to be the 19-year anniversary of this. And so at this, is God going to bring judgment, or is it going to be revival, or is it going to be both? And I had really felt in my heart, we had already seen some of this, and I felt it's going to be both. I felt that there's going to be a judgment, but then, and, and, and again, this is, when he was saying this, this was before COVID hit, right before, I mean, this is like a couple months, right before COVID hit. And, and, and I thought, we're going to have both. We're going to have some revival, but we're, there's going to be a judgment on America. And I just felt that in my heart, and I felt the Lord told me, he said, Mike, I want you to bring together the small businesses the patriots and the churches and unite them as one voice to push back against the darkness and to expose what the enemy's doing and to expose all the lies and the deception and to push back. And at that point, I didn't have a name. I didn't realize the name for that was going to be We the County. But I just felt this on my heart. And so then I went to the elders and I said, hey, this is what I'm seeing. Uh, uh, and, and we had prophesied, what we had prophesied uh, uh, months before this, this is what I saw. And I got biblical parallels for all this. So it's not like you just dream this stuff up. No, there's biblical patterns and paradigms, just like Jonathan Kahn had. And I had, what I had seen is I, 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 I saw that God's, um, uh, the, the civil authority, the civil authority, which is through our constitution, that's our civil government, that that civil authority along with uh, the spiritual authority, which is the church, the, the, the uh, religious authority. They operate separately, but yet, and they used to operate together as one. With our founding fathers and with the start of this uh, country and everything and the Declaration of Independence, those two functioned together. There was no separation between church and state because separation of church and state is not in the Constitution. Look all over uh, Washington, D.C., and you see the, the Ten Commandments. and everything. We, are, we already went into this. They weren't combined as one like this, but they were two separate, but they still worked together as one. God was never intended to be kicked out of our government. He was part of our government from the founding, but now they're trying to get us convinced that he's never supposed to be a part. But I said, the day is coming back again where we're going we're gonna, to, most of the people are going to want to come back to be one nation under God. And the civil government is going to work with the church and they're going to work in unity like the original intent of the Constitution, like they used to. And they're going to stand up and they're going to fight together and push back against this corrupt uh, uh, Luciferian uh, darkness that's trying to take over America and take our freedoms away. Because our freedoms only come from Jesus Christ. And so I felt that. And then from that, um, I, when, I, when I explained that to the elders, um, they said, okay, let's, let's, let's start this then. What do you, uh, and I said, you know, I, I said, it's, I, I feel it's supposed to be we the county. It's supposed to be a county by county movement because each county is somewhat autonomous. They have um, uh, authority to work within the county despite what the state's doing and the federal government. Our voices can be really strong at the local level, at the county level. So we started, um, you know, we the county at, at, at that point. And it kind of fulfilled, you know, the prophecy that I said that they're going to start working together, the, the civil government and the churches, the religious authority. And I don't know, a lot of you have probably heard of this, but what has been passing through America right now that's really, really popular um, is uh, a program called Biblical Citizenship. Has anybody heard of Biblical? No, nobody in here? Okay, well, it's Pastor Mark Church is doing it. Uh, Pastor Art, you have, yeah, several people have. I'm surprised more haven't. Uh, Pastor uh, um, uh, Bruce Clark, uh, their church is doing it. And it, what it's doing is it's explaining the original intent and how it's, the, the Christians are supposed to be involved in the government with going on just like Right to Life. Right to Life is a Christian organization that's involved in the government to push back against the darkness to protect life. Well, we're supposed to do that to protect our, our, our values and our morals that, that God has given us according to the Word of God. And so they, this program is now sweeping the nation called Biblical Citizenship. So what we had prophesized is, is, is growing up in the nation and more and more uh, churches are understanding this concept of what we've been talking about. So so we decided to do this, so we start, we're going to start We the County. So what you do when you start something, right, you got to have a vision. So, you know, I typed out the vision and wrote the vision for what We the County is going to do, what we're going to stand for. And then you got to have a website, and then you got to have a logo. You need those things, right, so people can see it and get involved. 
Um, so um, we start getting that done, and Carissa was the person working in the office to do all that. She starts doing a good job, and, and I'm not sure when it's going to come to pass or how we're going to you know, launch it or anything like that. We don't have any dates or anything. And uh, I go on vacation. I go up, as you guys know, every uh, summer I get two weeks off, yay, and we go fishing, and uh, I love it, and we go up to the cabin. So we went on vacation, came back, and I heard that the website was done. And I heard that Carissa came up with the logo. I didn't tell her what to come up with. And so I'm, I'm all excited, and I get back on a Thursday, and I, I, I look at it, and I, so I go to the website, oh, this looks really cool, and people can sign up, and it's got her vision. And then I look at the logo, and the logo is um, just the, the torch from the Statue of Liberty. Which, you know, they call that the beacon, okay? And it, and it was just that. Um, and I noticed it was just black and white. Well, I like color. So I'm, I'm like, man, I would like a little color in there, maybe in the flame or some color. So, so the next day, I meet in the office, and I meet with, with Carrie and with Carissa, and we're talking about We the County, how it's coming, website, what do we got to do, blah, 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 and getting all that organized. And, um, and then I brought up, I said, you know, I like the logo, but um, I don't like the black and white. I want some color. And Carissa, with a very sweet, humble heart, God bless her, she said, well, you know, I really feel, I believe in my heart that it's supposed to be black and white. So it's like, sorry, pastor. <laughs> it's going to be black and white. And I'm sure if I would have insisted and said, no, I'm the pastor, because I got the authority. You listen to me. You put color in there. But that's not a good pastor. <laughs> that would be a bad pastor. And so I thought, okay, cool. You know, it'll, it'll be black and white. And so then, um, you know how we understand about that 19-year that paradigm, the 19-year paradigm of what happened in, in, in back in, in Israel, uh, the tribe of Judah and Jerusalem, with that limited invasion. 19 years later, the full invasion came. Well, we're coming up on the anniversary of that, and it just so happens that the 19-year anniversary of 9-11 is the 19-year anniversary of Lifesong Church, and they're both coming into the same weekend. And so... We, had the, we got the logo, we got the website, we got the vision, we got it. So I said, so we're all set, so next week we can launch this thing. So we're going to launch We the County the next weekend, because uh, it's our 19-year anniversary. Let's, let's do this and let's launch it. And so um, uh, we decided, okay, next week we're going to launch this. And so then the next morning, Saturday morning, a week before the launch, um, I get a devotional from Jonathan Kahn called Sapphires, and it's a daily devotional where you get scriptures, and he gives you a good word for the day. This magazine comes out monthly, monthly, once every month. And again, Jonathan Kahn tied in with so much of this stuff. He's the one that <laughs> I saw the, the parallel of 19 years and Lifesong Church, and this is why you were created, and it's 19 years later, and, but you were originally called Lights of Hope, but now you're, you're Lifesong and how all this is fitting together. And and so I'm, I'm thinking of all this stuff, and I, and I, look, I look at the, the, the magazine for the first time, and on the front cover, on the front cover for that month is the beacon from the statue, just not the whole Statue of Liberty, just the beacon, exactly like our logo. And then the thing that floored me, this magazine always has color galore. I mean, there's color, color, color in this thing. It's color busy, color dizzy. And, uh, I, but that logo on the front, black and white. I couldn't believe it. And then I remember Carissa saying, it's got to be black and white. And I thought, woo! So on the weekend coming up that Jonathan Kahn, who talked about the paradigm with 9-11, puts all this stuff together, and I see that. And so for the month is the logo, which we just picked in black and white on the cover of that. And it's going to be our 19-year anniversary. And it's a 19-year anniversary of, of what's happening here. And when God started everything, he started us, um, our, our roots, our foundation. Remember I say foundation's important. And remember when we first started, we were supernaturally given a key to a building called the beacon. So it all started in the beacon. And we were called Lights of Hope Ministry. And, and the prophecies about me is that I would be the lighthouse. And how all this stuff fit together and it was just blowing me away. And so it got even a little more cool because that morning then, uh, when we're going to launch this of our 19-year anniversary, and I'm thinking of how all this stuff fits together, and then I felt the Holy Spirit go, you want to see something even more cool? He said, look, look up the definition of beacon. 
I go, oh, okay. So, you know, I like, I like on my phone, I got series, you know. So I said, hey, series, give me the definition of beacon. So I look up the definition of beacon, and it, and it floored me. God had, has, through all this and understanding, those of you who have been here long enough, God has given us a trumpet voice. And a trumpet voice is from Isaiah 58, um, and, and, and that's to speak prophetically uh, to God's people. That's, that's to speak and, and, and give warning and direction to God's people. And God gave that to us back in our 14th year anniversary. And again, it was all confirmed and it was really cool and blah, blah, blah. Don't have time to go into all that. But in that, God said, this is what your trumpet voice is for. He said, it's to warn God's people, warn. It's to assemble God's people and equip them. And it's to celebrate the victory. So I knew this. That's our trumpet voice. And we already had this written down. And then when I looked up beacon which is the same thing as shining that light, holding up. Now, here's the definition of what Ceres gave me for a beacon. It says, a fire or a light set up in a high or prominent position as a warning, signal, or celebration. And I was amazed. I said, that's exactly what our trumpet voice is. That's exactly what God's called us to do. I can't believe this, and I didn't know that going in. And also, as you guys know, what is that torch called? It's called the beacon of hope. So we were lights of hope that was stationed in the beacon, prophesied to be a lighthouse with a paradigm coordinating with 9-11 terrorist attack, and God has a plan, and here we are with the 19-year anniversary of that, launching this ministry called We the County, which is pushing back against the darkness, doing what God's called us to do. If you think all that is an accident, and by chance, I'm telling you, you can't see God's fingerprints. Come on, God is good. Man, come on. Woo, yeah. Praise God. So, let me just finish reading this. I, I, I didn't read the, the last paragraph, the first service, and Gary came up and he goes, you got to read the last paragraph. Oh, okay. See, that's how it works together, right? That's how we work together. I, I, I don't know it all and I'm not the best all and I'm just who I be. And I always need a little help and correction from everybody. So I'm going to read the last paragraph. <laughs> I don't want to leave it out. So last paragraph in the message, it says, we are shining a light in the darkness, which is the whole series title for this, these four platforms. We are shining a light in the darkness as God predestined Lifesong Church to be a light, a beacon, a lighthouse for such a time as this. I believe We the County is one of the movements to restore the breach, to put America back on the foundation of the original intent of our founding fathers, releasing the authority of God back into our government, our schools, our culture, our way of life, once again being one nation under God. Now, many people will never consent to one nation under God, but I believe the majority will. But if we don't speak it and believe it, it's not going to happen. That's what we're called to do. And everybody, wherever you feel comfortable operating, whatever platform, whatever God tells you to do, do it. Like, like Dennis said, I love Dennis. He's like, Dennis is very patriotic. Our worship leader, Dennis, he's very, very patriotic. I mean, big time. But his, his call is to totally focus on praise and worship. You know, and, and, and the platform of uh, Ignite the Thumb praise rallies and stuff like that. That's what he does. And that's what he, that's what he feels. And he doesn't feel, I, I just don't got the time to be involved in We the County. Cool, no problem, man. Do what you do good, bro. Do it. Go for it. He's an awesome worship leader, isn't he? Woohoo, Denny. Yeah. Come on. And that's good. That's how it works, so. So is everybody here going to be involved in We the County? No. But at least pray. Do whatever involvement you think you're called to do. But if you can't see that it's in our roots, it's in our DNA, it was from our creation that God called us for such a time as this because we live the Bible. We just don't preach a nice Bible story on Sunday and everybody go home. It's no, now get to work. <laughs> it's like those angels, you know, when Jesus was taken up, when they took Jesus up, you know, right? This is after, you know, he was crucified, he rose from the dead, and he walked with everybody for 40 days. And in the book of Acts, and so, and then Jesus just kind of like, you know, whoop, was taken up in a cloud, and they stood there going like, oh, and the angel said, what are you doing? Just don't stand there. It's time to get to work. You know, that, you know, so you hear a good message, and now time to get to work, because we've got faith to push back. He's given you authority. He's given you authority, and your words are powerful. When you show up at a school board, when you show up at a county board, when you show up at this place, say, well, I don't think I see it that way. Let me tell you how I see it. 
And we're not ignorant. We don't shout people down. We don't get irate. We don't call names because you have the power and authority of God. You can talk intelligently. You can have an open debate and dialogue with people because you have facts and understanding and your point is very valid. But if you don't speak it and you're like this, I'm a good smoker. Put your mask on and shut up. Anyways, I couldn't help that. All right. Well, God is so good. Hallelujah.